Well, we have explored how the brain evolved and some of the philosophical aspects of consciousness. I would like to take a moment to look at how the brain actually works and what makes me, me. Nothing is how it seems. To get an idea of this, we have to drop our everyday notion of reality and instead think of our brains as being incredible hologram creating machines. What is actually out there is different from the representation your brain makes of it. Take this example of a room. In our hologram created by the brain, we see a normal room. The brain has filled in the gaps to make it so. Even when we show that it is not a normal room, we can't change how we see it. Instead, the brain tells us that the people in it are actually getting bigger, even though we know they are obviously not. What we see as solid is in fact mostly space. A wall, a floor and even us are made up mostly of space. If you took every human on the planet and condensed them so that there was no space in the molecular structures, we would all fit into a sugar cube. What we are actually seeing and feeling are the physical forces and our reactions to them. In the case of solidity, what we are mostly sensing is the electromagnetic force of the elements that make up the structure. Our electromagnetic force cannot penetrate it and therefore it feels and looks solid to us. Likewise, what we sense as a smell or a sound or a colour is in fact a representation of physical phenomenon, such as energy waves travelling through the air that is received and is converted into a representation of our physical environment in relation to us. Bats happen to create their virtual world through echolocation. Fish have a lateral line that senses pressure changes in the water and mantis shrimp see their world in trinocular vision with far more colour information than we do. But all of us make representations of what is out there. From the very first stages of embryo growth to adulthood, using our neural networks, the brain creates pathways that take the sensory information and imbue it with meaning, substance, emotional depth, form and memory. As an adult, you have no reason to question what your brain tells you. Over its development, you create representations of things and the emotional responses to them. You know not to walk into a wall, because it's solid. You know that a flame is hot. And if anything is out of place, you will feel a sense of alertness without actually knowing why. The brain does create a state of being for the object or sensation that has emotive links and assumes understanding of its physical properties. And these things become familiar to us and are accepted without us needing to waste brain power assessing its form and function. If you take a moment to quickly look around your surroundings, you will notice a lot of things you've not noticed before. The 
brain's hologram is effectively reducing the level of complexity to what it needs to know and only pays passing homage to these qualia if they become of interest. We take only about a million of the sensory information available to us to create this holographic illusion of the world. To create it and feel part of it, our brain has come up with a very clever trick. What we see as now is in fact fabricated just after the event. The processing needed to bring a state of representation of our world takes a little amount of time, but it is delivered as real time. If you have a clock with a seconds hand, you can actually see this happening. Take a head and eye movement from one side of the room back round to the clock, taking in as much information as you can. When your eyes rest on the clock, the seconds hand may take a short while to start to move. Or will always play back a full first second, as your mind takes about half a second to create your conscious reality. Unconscious awareness is in near real time. If a friend jumps out of a dark alley shouting, boo, you immediately react with a shock and an emotive sense of fear. This is the limbic system that immediately sends messages to release chemicals in the body that changes the state of our cell structures. It is only when your brain then identifies the situation as being your friend and therefore being non-threatening in your consciousness that you catch your breath and smile and realise the exact situation you are in. Again, just behind real time. Most sports such as tennis would not be possible if the motor reactions were not at the subconscious level. Start to think about it and you'll probably lose. It's even suggested that the very state of being conscious is also an illusion. Events in the brain tell us that activities occur a fraction of a second before we actually have a conscious thought. But where does this thought come from? What or who instigates this activity before we've had a thought? If you ever go to sleep on a problem, you'll often wake up in the morning with the answer. There have been many thought processes which have been thinking without you knowing and that have come up with something that seems to spring into your mind as the answer. So a lot of what we feel and think is controlled by a system that is automated outside of our consciousness. It is also true that our conscious state can create emotional responses that affect how we feel. For instance, just the thought of a big hairy spider can often lead to anxiety. So what actually makes us us? Well, it is the connectedness of our consciousness to our memory that gives the sense of self. And this is further connected to our learned and inherited emotional pathways. It is suggested that having a sense of self is also an illusion. Patients that have had the connecting tissue removed between the left of the brain and the right of the brain actually believe that they are two different people and respond differently to the world. The right can communicate through pictures and the left through language and a question can be answered very differently by both.
So each area of the brain gives the feeling of a unified self, when in fact there are many millions of separate things going on at the same time, in different areas, all vying for importance, and then selected into consciousness as a thought or a feeling. This is a bit like rain on a pond. The ripples of subconscious thought are going on all the time, but we only select the most important one, the one with the largest ripple. So what parts actually make up the brain? At the front of the brain, we have specialist areas for planning and reasoning, which are well connected to the emotional center. Above the ears, there is a section dedicated to speech, understanding and hearing. As we have seen before, a lot of the involuntary motor functions are taken care of by the primitive brain stem. This includes digestion, body temperature and waste disposal. The lobes on the upper sides receive data from the skin for touch, pressure and pain and correlate the relative position of our body in space. At the back of the brain we have a very large area dedicated to processing sensory information from the eye. These all interconnect with the limbic system, which is involved in the formation of memories and channels the important sensory information to the conscious parts of the brain. This area particularly integrates the senses and links the brain's emotional memory map to these stimuli. So our brain creates a holographic, emotion-linked 3D landscape through processing all our senses and colours it with our memories and experiences. Eventually, as this drops into our consciousness, I have a sense of being me in a familiar world.